This is a review of The Last Amazon. I've actually mentioned this book before um, a while back on the channel when it was being kickstarted and now it's finally been released and available for purchase and I could not be happier with the result. Co-creators of the book, Jameson Stone and David Grandio over at Apathesis Studios very kindly upgraded my copy of the book to the special edition so that I could show it to you in all its splendor. And the difference between the special edition and the standard edition is uh, really cosmetic. The special edition has has a different cover and sort of different cover materials as well as a sturdy slipcase to house it in but the actual contents of both the standard and special edition are exactly the same which is what we like to see so it just depends how fancy you like your books and to me this is just a really typical example of the amazing uh, quality and care that has been put into this book you might often think of kickstarted or self-published books as having to necessarily be of a lower quality because their budgets are so severely limited but with this book the the hard work and quality that is evident in in everything from the physical book itself, the art, the graphic design, the writing, it's not only as good as something you'd get from a major publisher, it's actually better. There are just so many great things I want to highlight about this book and it's actually kind of difficult because it's, it's hard to describe because there are not many books that exist that are like this. So I think it's best if we just start really simply with the uh, story and setting uh, what this book is about. So the story takes place in a post-apocalyptic America in the year 2050 and our main character is some sort of digital entity called Lex which sounds very vague but that's because even she doesn't know who or what she is and so another character called Red is there to guide Lex through all this information about the current state of the world and learning more about not only who is actually responsible for the apocalypse but also the mysteries surrounding it including who and what Lex is and the nature and role played by these super soldiers called Amazons. And that's just a very, very simple and brief overview of the story and setting. Um, I don't want to go into it too much more because a lot of the fun is discovering that stuff for yourself. And you'll, based on what I've said and the flip through we're seeing here, I think that'll be a, a good enough indication if you think this is the sort of thing you'll enjoy. So the story itself is fine, it's great. If it would be just as good if it were a comic book, a, a novel, a movie, a video game. But what makes it special, what makes it stand out not just as a story, but an experience is the way it's being presented. Lex, like the reader, doesn't know anything about this world or its events, and so she has to learn about it by logging into different computer networks, by hacking files, by reading news reports, blog posts, um, social media posts, ads, company reports, uh, video and audio transcripts. All this media and documents are informing her and we the readers, um, about this world and its events. And if you've watched a lot of the reviews I've done on this channel, you'll know that the books I tend to rave most highly about are the ones that use this method of storytelling to be completely immersive and engaging. I just so wish there were more books like this because it's such an amazing way to tell stories and world build. But obviously doing this sort of approach requires a lot of hard work and effort and creativity because plenty of franchises and things have this sort of um, companion in-world lore book but a lot of them are kind of lazy and not done very well which sort of defeats the purpose whereas The Last Amazon uses this style perfectly. Some other books that are kind of similar are Last Man Standing, Kill Book of a Bounty Hunter, which I have done a review on. I mean, it even reminds me a lot of the Abstergo Industries handbook for the Assassin's Creed games. Or even if you want to see this sort of same approach but applied to fantasy, there is, um, I did a review on the Improved Emperor's Guide to Tamriel for the Elder Scrolls. Or even the Ology books, which were quite popular a, a number of years ago, although those were aimed at a, a younger audience. In fact, I wish this style of book were more popular so we actually had a, a better term to describe it. And I mean, in the most literal sense, the best way to describe this book would be a graphic novel, in that it is a novel told graphically. However, that term obviously is much more closely associated with sequential comics. Instead, the term I keep using to describe this book in my head is a picture book for adults, which I think is a great term, but it obviously sounds a little disparaging and doesn't convey the sophistication of this book. 
The Last Amazon also kind of reminds me a lot of a really good post-apocalyptic comic book called Lazarus. And what they did with that comic is they actually ended up releasing source books, which are basically, you know, the law books, the guide to the world. And I thought those were so cool because I had never seen a, a comic book do something like that before. And a lot of the stuff feels very, very similar to what we have here in The Last Amazon, except the one huge advantage The Last Amazon has is that it is visually so much more impressive, which I really think is a crucial point. But there are two major differences that The Last Amazon has to books like that. The first is that things like Assassin's Creed, Lazarus, Elder Scrolls, these are all things that have existing properties that they're building off, existing stories and worlds. And that's almost always how we see these sort of books released. There's an existing movie, game, comic, whatever, and then they'll release a sort of lore book or an in-world book. And they're using this style of presentation of documents and such as a fun companion book to complement the main work, whereas with The Last Amazon and Last Man Standing, they're using this style as the main event. Also, it's immeasurably aided by the fact that this isn't just a source book of lore and world building and information. That's kind of more the focus of the first half of the book, but the second half is really much more about following and uncovering a story and character. And The Last Amazon really is one of the best examples of blending world building and story rather than having them be a little more separated, which traditionally is usually the case. And I mean, setting up the world so heavily ahead of the story and characters is probably the opposite of how storytelling is traditionally done, but with The Last Amazon, the reason I like this approach so much is because they aren't tied into an existing work. This is my first exposure to their world, and it's a much faster, more effective way of plugging me into this world and story without me having to invest a lot of time in front-loading a lot of plot and characterization. But I don't think either approach is better or worse, it just depends on how creative and skillfully you can pull it off. And The Last Amazon is, is really an example of that. I think one of the ways they were able to pull this off so well was by having these two characters of Lex and Red, so you actually do still have characters to invest in while learning all about the world. And the result of this whole approach is I am so excited for what comes next. And two, it's really interesting how they've taken a digital experience but printed it in an analog format. And the way they've captured that, the graphic design throughout this whole book is just, it, it's crazy. In fact, I bet there'll be a lot of people who read this book and think, wow, this should have been like um, some sort of video game or an app, some sort of um, interactive digital experience. It really feels like that. But if I recall correctly, I think that's originally what the creators wanted to do. But because that was so expensive, they decided to turn it into a book. And even though this story world and presentation does probably lend itself more towards a digital experience, something that's a bit more interactive, and we may very well get something like that in the future. But personally, I'm very glad it actually happened this way because I am someone who loves having, you know, something physical, having a book. I mean, there's just so much more I still want to say and point out all the little nuances and details. And I mean, I wish I could turn this video into like a, a weekend seminar on storytelling and world building using The Last Amazon as an example, but I won't bore you with that and hopefully my um, recommendation here has been enough to entice you to maybe discover those things for yourself. I think it's just such a great example of why things like Kickstarter are so amazing because it gives you the power to identify a great idea, vote with your wallet, get in on the ground floor and help bring something to life that you know maybe without your help never would exist. And so to see the last Amazon develop over the past year and to see how much genuine love and hard work the the guys at Apothesis have put into this book and have it not only meet my really high expectations but also exceed them is is just so gratifying and so i strongly recommend that you check this book out um, i'll link below to where you can get it on their store and i think you can also get it on amazon and hopefully you'll be able to feel really good about not only the fact that you're getting a really amazing and unique book but also that you're supporting independent creators who have made a really special book that deserves as much attention as it can get. And also, if you want to support them even more directly, definitely consider backing them on the Apathesis Studios Patreon, which is some really great behind-the-scenes stuff so you can keep up to date with everything they're working on, because I, for one, can't wait to see what they do next. <laughs>